With the release of Year 9 Season 2, there have been a lot of settings that have been changed or added, and in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 settings that you need to change for the new season. The first setting we have is in the General tab, and it's going to be Stun VFX. This is a new setting released with the new season, and prior to Year 9 Season 2, if you were flashed or stunned, your whole screen would go white. This can be kind of jarring, and some people probably don't like this, so if you turn your Stun VFX to Dark Glare, instead of your screen going white, it will go black. This removes a lot of the jarringness of being flashed, and keep in mind this also works when being flashed by Ying and doesn't change anything when concussed by somebody like Zofia or Ella. The next setting we have is voiceover presets. This is another new setting added in the new season, and what this setting does is it allows you to control which and how many voiceovers are played in game. At minimal, it only plays critical voiceovers such as quips when being blinded, grunts when taking damage, pain breathing when downed, and etc. Basically, it only plays the most important voiceovers. Then you got a step above, which is team focus, which is all all of the above, plus voiceovers for information like an enemy being spotted, traps being placed or detected, and etc. Then you have gameplay focus, which is everything above, plus voiceovers for information like weapon reloading, device deployment, wall reinforcing, etc. And lastly, you have maximum, which is everything above, plus voiceovers that enrich lore and add personality to the operators. This is most likely for instances like the voice lines between Zofia and Ella, and just different lore aspects like that. For me personally, I'll be using minimal. I think that's the best one for me because I don't really care about enriching the lore through voice lines, and minimal seems to be the most competitive preset, as you can't hear enemy team's voice lines anyways, so there's not really a point in hearing your teammate yelling reinforcing wall or heartbeat sensor deployed or whatever they say, so for me I will be using minimal. The next setting I'll be going over is in the general tab and it's going to be drone after prep. If you have this on automatic, when the prep phase ends you immediately get off your drone, meaning if you were running your drone from a defender it will take you off the drone. You obviously don't want that because then the defender can just shoot your drone when you get off of it, but if you do have it on semi-automatic, if your drone is alive in the prep phase, it won't take you off, but if your drone is broken, it will take you off. This is kind of bad because if your teammate wants you to get on his drone at the start of the action phase, it's going to take you off, so I wouldn't use this setting, but it's not bad. And lastly, we have manual, which allows you to choose when you get off your drone, so no matter what, you're in control. This is the setting I personally use, so that's what I recommend. The next setting I'll be talking about is in the audio tab, and it's going to be dynamic range. The default preset is hi-fi, it's the most dynamic and least compressed pressed, meaning sounds are going to be easier to distinguish, but things like footsteps and gadget placements are going to be quiet, and things like gunshots and explosions are going to be loud, which causes the quiet sounds to be more easily drowned out. But on night mode, the sound is the least dynamic and the most compressed, meaning the loud sounds are quieter and the quiet sounds are louder, meaning you can hear the harder things to hear easier. So now I'm in game, I'm just going to be giving you a few examples so that you can hear the difference between hi-fi and night mode. So right now I'm on hi-fi, and if I just shoot my gun, as you can hear, that's pretty loud. Now, if I were to switch it to night mode and shoot, as you can see, it's much quieter. There's a pretty big difference. Hi-Fi is so loud to where it actually kind of hurts my ears when I'm shooting. And now on Hi-Fi, if I throw this impact, I, as you can see, that explosion is very loud. Once again, hurts my ears. But if I switch it to night mode, the explosion is much quieter. And as you can hear, when I'm running around in Hi-Fi, that's the noise of my uh, own footsteps right there. And then if I switch it to night mode, as you can see, the footsteps are just a little bit louder. So basically, when you put it on night mode, you're going to be able to hear footsteps and the more important sounds much better. And on night mode, the sounds are a little bit harder to distinguish, but the more you play the game, it becomes easy to distinguish the sounds. And TV is the middle ground between hi-fi and night mode, but I don't really see anyone using this setting, so what I recommend is night mode. The next setting we have is HQ voiceover in the audio tab, and what this setting does is if you turn it off, the in-game announcer will be muted. So the guy that tells you when the prep phase ends or when there's 15 seconds left in the round or whatever, you know what I'm talking about, you can just turn him off. Now for me, I'm probably going to turn this off just to help me focus more, but if you're newer to the game, I can understand needing this reminders from the announcer, but this is just a good setting for Ubisoft to add. But the next setting we have is screen shake intensity in the accessibility tab. If you have this on, any explosion or whatever will shake your entire screen, making it harder to focus or aim, and just generally making it harder to play the game. If you have this off, then you can see anytime my screen would normally shake, it's just not going to, meaning you can focus much more, have better aim, and just play better. And obviously, if you set this setting to medium, it's going to be in the middle ground between no shaking and maximum shaking. I guess if you wanted realism, you could have this setting on, but for me, I'm not going to have it on. And next, we have optic color in the accessibility tab. You have the choice between a bunch of different colors for your reticle, and I wouldn't recommend default as it changes when you're on attack and defense, and red is one of the worst colors for reticles in my opinion. It really comes down to preference, but I wouldn't recommend white, black, or red as they seem 
seem to blend into the environment the most in my tests. Some that I would recommend are light green, green, yellow, light blue, and light orange as they seem to stick out the best in my tests. You can also lower the opacity of your reticle as even if you have it on 75, you'll still be able to see it, but it won't stick out as much causing it to distract you less subconsciously. But I wouldn't recommend going too low as it could be just harder to see. The next setting we have is team color in the accessibility tab. By default, your team's color will be blue and the enemy team's color will be red. This makes the most sense usually, but you actually gain an advantage if you change the enemy team's color. Like I said, by default, the enemy team color is red, but as you can see the lasers of this claymore blend in very well with the carpet. But if I were to change the enemy team's color to blue, it sticks out much more. This goes for really any team color oriented gadget in the game, red just blends in a little bit more. So most high level players including pro players, top ranked champions, have the enemy team color set to either orange or blue just so things like claymores or valkam stick out a little bit better. But the next setting we have is going to be in the controls tab and it's going to be drone deployment. On standard, which is default, when you throw out your drone you you immediately get on it, meaning if someone were to hear you on your drone, they can just run out on you and kill you while you're on your drone. But if you set it to advance, I can throw my drone out and keep my gun up, so if anyone were to run out on me, I can just easily kill them. And then I can just press the button to get on my drone and continue throughout the round. So just super simple, always have your drone deployment on advanced, it doesn't waste any time and you're gonna die a lot less. But the next setting we have is in the controls tab and it's going to be leaning behavior. On default, I can only lean while aiming, but if I change it to alternative, I can now lean from the hip. This is very beneficial when using shotguns or just when generally peeking so you can see much more without your scope blocking anything, but just keep in mind this only applies to console or controller as you can hip lean by default on keyboard and mouse. If you feel you improved from this video or you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing, and if you want to watch more of my content, then click the video popping up on your screen.